When it comes to the old school NBA, the 80s, the 90s, or now even the 2000s, a lot of fans think those eras, those time periods, were indeed the best. Now, looking at the new school fans, from really 2016 onwards, they think this time period, this era, is by far the best, the most skilled, and most athletic era of all time. And I would say one of the biggest advocates for this message is J.J. Redick. And when it comes to past legends, he'll trash Bob Cousy, Jerry West, and even Larry Bird. And there's no way you could ever argue Larry Bird is a top three three-point shooter of all time. You just, you, you can't make that argument. You'll look, no, I know that, but he was a great three-point shooter. He was not, not good. He was great. He's one of the top five three-point shooters of all time. He, well, that's how good Bird is. And Redick in that last clip right there, no comment, no input. But look on his face, just disgust and absolute disdain for Mad Dog Russo and Larry Bird. And when it comes to this overall debate of Larry Bird and today's NBA, I think Redick most of the times is highly disingenuous. As looking back at Bird, in 1980 his first year in the NBA, the three-point line was first introduced. That means for middle school, high school, even college, there was no three-point line. So looking at Bird 40 years later, and looking at his percentages, threes taken, and judging him solely off that, again, highly disingenuous. James Naismith invented the game. You were rewarded for putting the ball in the basket. There's plenty of people that have shot more, made more, and guess what? Made more at a higher percentage than Larry Bird from three. And look, let's be clear, J.J. Redick, not a dumb individual or basketball novice. But for some reason, when it comes to Bird, the overall context of era threes taken and percentage all goes out the window. As looking at Bird's first five years, when he was playing power four, was taking 1.1 threes per game. Collectively, those five years, his overall percentage was 30.8%. Now, the following four years at small forward, when he was healthy, that overall percentage jumped by 10%. And here's the funny thing about Larry Bird. When he took above three threes per game, which of that era was a lot, his overall percentage was never lower than 38.9%. When he took above 1.5 threes per game, that overall percentage was 40.8%. What I think that shows you guys right there is that Larry Bird, even taking two and a half, three threes per game, highly efficient and a dead eye shooter. And looking back at 1980, Bird's first year in the league, the first year three point shot, took 1.7 per game. Which back then, I mean, the first year three point line was pretty unprecedented. And his overall percentage was 40.6%. Now, here's the very important context Bird's idea as a volume shooter was off the charts. 58 total made threes, which combined was more than 11 teams had on the season. Now comparing 1980 to 81, 82, 83, and 84, Bird's attempts were nearly cut in half. Again, going to show you guys, when Bird utilized this shot, he was knocked down and highly efficient. And most of the attempts from 81 to 84, full court heaves, desperation shots, Shot clock winding down, got to chuck something up. You know, I trashed Larry Bird. Dominique Wilkins has been on like 19 different podcasts talking about how stupid I am for saying that Larry Bird is a top 10 player of all time and one of the greatest shooters ever. So what? But objectively, he's not a top five three point shooter. He's just not. Well, wasn't there? And no the argument against that is, oh, well, if he had played in today's era, he would be a top five. What? That doesn't even make sense. That's not based in reality or fact. Wait a minute, but was there a three point line early in his career? So stopping it right there, Andrew Schultz, the host of this podcast, he asked Reddick, was that three-point line there when Bird first began? And of course, 1980, it was. But here's the deal. Imagine in 2025, Adam Silver adds a four-point line, which is near the half court. That would totally transform the game and make three-pointers a little bit obsolete and diminish them. And I would say the overall value of the four-point line, it would take probably 10, 15 years to get its true value. But with that being said, someone like a Steph Curry, a Dame, the elite shooters of today, I wouldn't look back in 2016 and say those guys were just bum shooters and couldn't shoot four pointers like guys in 2060. Kind of the same thing with Burke. As again, three point line back then was a gimmick, a once a quarter, twice a game type thing 
players rarely ever did. And Bird, still for that era, was a volume three-point shooter shooting upwards of 40% yearly. And Redick in this clip being kind of dismissive, disingenuous, as usual. As when it comes to Bird in today's NBA, being a quote, top five shooter. Look, we'll never truly know. But looking back at the 80s, Bird's overall percentage being around 41.4% around three attempts. I mean, just do the math. Transport Bird taking three threes, now to this era, taking eight, nine, possibly 10. His percentage might dip marginally, but his overall makes career threes made would increase tenfold. I don't think that's controversial, a hot take, or really breaking any news. As guys in this league today are really a product of their era and their time period, as even bad shooters are taking five, six, or even seven threes nightly. And looking at the all-time ranks, Larry Bird currently is 125th all-time in made threes. And take a wild guess, who just passed him on career made threes? Yep, Draymond Green. I mean, even Jimmy Butler, not a knockdown shooter or a sniper, is going to pass Bird in the coming weeks. My overall point being, guys like Draymond, Jimmy Butler, not great shooters. But playing in the 2020s, by default, are taking more threes than someone like Bird in the 1980s. Does it make them better shooters? Of course not. That's idiotic. And if, like Reddick suggests, it's black and white, clear cut, it's makes percentage, end of story, we'd get things like this from all-time perspective. Richard Jefferson, percentage-wise, 37.6% from deep. The exact same as Larry Bird. Now, total makes Jefferson almost double Bird. If, like JJ says, makes percentage all that matters. Someone like Bird, not a top 100 shooter of all time from deep. But again, use common sense. Jefferson's era, three-point shot was valued, taught, and practiced. Bird's era, it wasn't practiced, it was niche, and Bird himself was the pioneer and innovator of that shot. And like I said earlier, Bird in today's NBA by proxy would take double the threes he took back in his own era. And looking at guys today who take high volume three-point attempts and are average blabbered shooters, someone like Jalen Green, nearly eight attempts, 34%. Terry Rozier, nearly seven attempts, 34%. Kyle Kuzma, very similar, 33.5%. Keontae George, the exact same. Someone like Jaron Jackson Jr., a Jordan Clarkson, P.J. Washington, even Sadiq Bey. All these guys run five, six threes and low mid thirties percentage wise. Are any of those guys all time great shooters or knockdown snipers from deep? Of course not. But the overall point remains, those guys in this era by default because of the era are taking more threes per game than Larry Bird. And looking back at Bird's own career as a volume three-point shooter, I got kind of curious. When he took at least five threes per game, how effective was he? Well, here's your answer. Looking at every year of his career, in total, 95 games with five or more threes. That includes the postseason. Total makes, 249. Attempts, 577. For a percentage of 43.2%. Now, that right there on its own is pretty damn impressive. But the years it includes is Larry Bird's post-prime, 1990, 91, and 92. If you look at Larry Bird pre-injury, his overall percentage was 45.9% when he took at least five threes per game. I mean, those stats right there, pretty shocking and impressive. As if Bird was a high volume three-point shooter, his overall percentage actually increased. So the game is a little different, but you're saying the data doesn't show that he's a top three-point shooter. Yeah, he, he shot like three a game or something. Yeah, I mean, 37% for his career. A different Draymond game. Green yeah. just passed him in the all-time three-point Total three-point, three point, yeah, yeah. yeah. So stopping right there, Redick, he understands Draymond Green passed Bird in all-time threes made. He gets that but still can't grasp the overall concept that Larry Bird's era totally skews his stats, his percentage, and total makes. I mean, it's so plainly obvious a basketball novice could pick this up. And Redick, again, not stupid, not a novice. 
So what is he? I think Redick at his core is just pro NBA 2016 onwards. Anything prior to that, he couldn't care less about. And when it comes to Bird's overall numbers, Redick says straight up the data doesn't support Larry Bird being an all-time great shooter. Now here's the thing. My stats, my numbers, I think, disprove that notion pretty thoroughly. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.